As we continue our discussion with inequalities, let's look at quadratic inequalities. Quadratic inequalities will be inequalities that take on the form of a quadratic, like ax squared plus bx plus c, and then, you know, greater than, maybe greater than or equal to, or less than, less than or equal to zero, it doesn't really matter. You just have some kind of inequality here. And here's the way that we're going to solve this. The first step is to solve the corresponding solve the corresponding quadratic equation so basically you rewrite this guy as an equation and you solve it and then when you do that you will identify Identify intervals based on the critical values that you got from step one. And then once you do that, when you create these intervals, then you're going to use test values to check and check the validity of these guys. So use test values to determine the validity of each interval. Okay. For example, if I take if I take this guy right here x squared plus 2x minus 15 is greater than or equal to 0. Now here's what you don't want to do. Don't work this whole guy with the inequality in place. It, it doesn't work out. It leads to statements that don't make any sense, statements that are wrong. So instead what you do is you solve the corresponding quadratic equation. So you take this guy And you look at it a little bit differently. You say that this is x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. And, and there's a reason we want to do this. 0 is what we call, what I call the gatekeeper of mathematics. Because on one side of 0 are the negative values, on the other side are the positive values. And they don't really mix. If you look at the order of the number line, one side is positive, one side is negative. They're not mixed up and zero is the gatekeeper. Zero is the guy in between them. And that's important for us in what we're about to do here. I want to find out where do we equal zero, because if I know where I equal zero, then I know one side is positive, one side is negative. And in this case, I'm looking for those that are positive. So watch this. This guy will factor as x minus three times x plus five. And when I solve this, I find that x equals 3 or x equals negative 5. So we have our critical values. That's step 1. Step 2 is basically look at this on the number line. We look at this on the number line and I pay attention to the order that I have. Negative 5 is on the left. 3 is more on the right. These guys create three intervals for me. I've got one, two, I've got three intervals that I'm going to check. Okay. So in these intervals, I'm going to do test values. So here's the thing. This is a polynomial expression. Okay. He cannot go from having uh, to returning positive values to all of a sudden returning negative values unless he hits the, the zero, unless he hits the gatekeeper. Which means any number that I plug in that's on this side, that's in this interval, these guys will all return the exact same sign, either all positive or all negative. Likewise, here in the middle, any number that I plug in between negative five and positive three, if I plug it into this polynomial, it's going to give me something that's all the same sign, either all positive or all negative. 
And then lastly over here, any value that I plug in from three and greater will give me the same value, either positive or negative. Or not the same value, but the same sign. So here's what we're going to do. If I check, if I test something, say, negative 6, and I would plug in negative 6 into this expression, let's, let's plug it in right here. Is it positive or negative? That's really what I want to see. If I plug in negative 6, I get 36. Minus 12 is 24, and then 24 minus 15 is 9. So that's a positive number. So I'm just going to make a little sign, a little note here. I've got positives over here. You may be going, why are you saying all positives? Well, if you were to plug in negative 7 or negative 8 or any other negative number on this side here, anything over here, when you plug it into this polynomial, you're going to get something that is positive. If you don't believe me, let's check with the graphing calculator. If I store negative 6 into x, and then I want to evaluate x squared plus 2x minus 15, I get something that's positive. If I change this up and I type in negative 8, I still get something positive. Anything that is on the left side like negative 5.8 and still get something positive. Anything in this interval will return a positive value. Let's see what happens if I check something between negative 5 and 3. The easiest guy to check is to check 0. If I plug in 0, that's super easy. 0 plus 0 minus 15 that gives me a negative number, so I know everything in between here will be 0. If you don't believe me, pick anything in between negative 5 and 3 Plug it in, you're going to get something that's negative. And then finally over here, if I plug in 4, that's 8, excuse me, 16 plus 8 is 24. 24 minus 15 is positive 9. So everything over here is positive. Now look at my original inequality, though. My original inequality, I was looking for those values that were greater than or equal to 0. So for those guys that were greater than or equal to 0, that corresponds to this stuff and this other interval right here. What about the endpoints? Is negative 5 included? Well, negative 5 was a 0. It, it was what would make this original polynomial equal to 0. But since I can equal 0, that means I get to include this guy. Likewise, 3. 3 is a 0, so and I will say it's a 0. That means when I plug it in, I get a 0 as the result. So this is how my graph looks, and then my interval notation is just from negative infinity to negative 5, the bracket, and I use this union symbol to join it with the other interval from 3 to infinity. Now you can actually see this on the graph, but the thing is you have to know what you're looking for. If I look at this, let's go over here. And if I were to type in x squared plus 2x minus 15. Uh, excuse me. Let's do a standard zooming window, z, uh, zoom 6. And let's actually change this a little bit so you can see the parabola a little bit better. Let's make this a negative 20 for the y min. When I look at this parabola, I see that there are two places where I'm greater than or equal to zero. See, when I see this guy, and I'm looking at it in terms of graph, I'm looking at this as y equals. Where are your y values greater than or equal to zero? That means in, up in terms of up and down, where are you greater than or equal to zero? Well, you're above zero for the y value here and also here on that section of the graph. Now you see that this guy happens at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 5 and to the left, and happens at positive 3 and to the right. 
which is the same thing I have down here. Anything left of negative 5 or greater than 3 is going to be above that. Now, what if I were asking this guy to be less than? If I wanted to know where is this guy less than or below 0, it would have just been this one interval, interval right here, which would have been all of this stuff between negative 5 and 3. And that would have matched up with these guys being negative. So I can use the graph to see where I'm supposed to be greater than or equal to 0. So that's the part here on the left and the part here on the right. Now remember, we had just done something about using logic. So let's come back here to the y equals. And I want to see where is this guy greater than or equal to 0. So you see it gives me two sections here. It gives me coming from negative infinity to 5 and then from 3 to infinity. It's the same thing that I have right here. Now, what if I were to change this guy? Like I said, if I want it to be less than or equal to. Notice that you get the stuff that was in the middle instead. And that would match up with this. See, where is this graph below 0? Between negative 5 and 3. But since the original guy was greater than or equal to 0, let me go ahead and change this back. So this is what we already knew. This is the original logic graph. So it's 1's where it's true. So from negative infinity to negative 5 and 3 to infinity. And then look at this. The places where we are above the x-axis corresponds 